Hello, this is Bonnie, and uh, today I'm going to be doing some stamping and a lot of masking, I think, and maybe a little bit of the watercolor stamping too. So, um, um, one thing I did want to mention to you is on um, March 17th, which um, is, um, while well, I'm filming this, is tomorrow, um, we will be, Fairy Hugs will be on Create and Craft at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. UK time. And uh, everything that I'm gonna be using in on this card will be available um, with Create and Craft, but you could always purchase any of the supplies or any of Fairy Hugs um, stamps from um, Julia Watts, dots, um, Julia Watts um, UK. Just Crafts UK, just type that in. And I always have that in the description below. You can just actually um, click on the link below. And um, you can get anything from, usually from Julia. She can order it for you. So I always I always forget to actually mention that on the video, but that's always below in the description, just to let you know. So um, today I'm gonna be using Fairy Hugs um, Bunnies. Again, this is gonna be in the show. I am gonna be using um, Fairy Teacup, and this is a real good versatile stamp. You can use that with many things. Um, another thing that's um, really cool is the meadow grass. And then um, I used this the other day, but I'm gonna be using that again. And all of these are going to be in, on the show. And this is a fairy flower. <clears throat> now, what I did was I um, am going to be using or designing something very similar to what is on the Fairy Hugs Facebook group. It's, called, it's Fairy Hugs Store. Um, if you ever were to go to look for that. And also I have that in the description below the link. Um, I'm going to be using that, um, the current Facebook banner as my inspiration today. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I'm going to show you with some of these, um, how we're going to go about doing that. So we're going to have the bunny, um, coming out of the teapot. It's going to be kind of like his little place, his little house. And then we're also going to be using, um, the meadow grass in and around it so it's kind of like hidden kind of like behind it and around it so um in order to do that i want to make it look like the bunny is actually coming out of the teacup so to do that you have to um, stamp and then mask so um you know we're going to do it here so i'm going to be using the larger bunny for this scene and I'm going to be using um, Versifying Clear Nocturne for the bunny. He would be good also in brown because um, I've stamped him in brown before. And um, the key to stamping um, any stamps that have, I want to say, skinny lines um, is not to have to stamp it twice. So um, make sure your ink pad is juicy and you have your stamp um, with a lot of ink on it. Not too much ink, but you know what I mean. Make sure it's stamped well, inked up well. And then I let that sit just for a little bit to absorb into the paper. And I am using a um, heavier cardstock just because the idea is um, I might actually put um, some water on it, so I'm using the heavier cardstock. And it looks to me like this one end, it does not want to stay down. So that tells me that my sticky part of my washi tape is not working and I need it to work. So I'll put some more tape on for the corners. <clears throat> so then the next thing I wanna do, because I've stamped the bunny, oh, I wanted to show you how good that looks too, just a second here, raise that up. Whoops, I'm in the way of my light. So you can see he's really, Get the light on here pretty good. Um, he's really, um, you can see all his little fur lines and everything, looks really good. So I did make a mask for him. This is his mask. And the masking tape I use is from Gina K. And it seems to work really well for me. I used to make it out of cardstock and because it was thick, the cardstock was a little bit thick or even if I used it out of computer paper, it tended to be a little bit 
too thick and then I would have kind of like, I call it like a hiccup between and it didn't look like it masked as well, but I usually got it to work. So this is gonna go on top of our bunny. I think I'm gonna come a little bit closer, hold up. I don't, it's so hard when I have to stamp horizontal and I have all these things in my way. Let me make sure I can see what I'm doing. All right, so the main part that I'm concerned about is the back part a little bit. It doesn't matter if you pull a little bit away from it because you want to make sure that it gets stamped. You don't have, I call it the hiccup. But um, <clears throat> So then the next thing is I want the bunny to be coming out of this teacup. So in order to do that, I have to, like I said, I've got the mask on. Um, it would be, yeah, this is the way around. And that's pretty much where I want him to be sitting. So then I go ahead and put the teacup on. Now you could do the teacup in a different color if you wanted to, but this I think will all tie in okay. Because I do believe I'm going to do the green in the background, um, or I'm going to do the um, meadow grass in green for the background and around it. So that meant that means that I also had to make a mask for my cup, which is really beneficial because um, I will be using I will do things like that with this cup a lot, so it's worth making a mask for it. And I like the teacup because you can color it in if you want to. There we go. And I think that one needs a little bit more ink. I've been doing a lot of stamping this week and like I've said to you before in videos, I need to get my, whoops, I need to get my um, ink pad inked again. It's always beneficial to also have, um, re, you know, the re-inkers, especially if you like to do stamping. And my understanding is that Julia now carries the um, colored re-inker. She always has the regular black re-inker as well, um, but she just got in all of the color re-inkers. So any of you watching from the UK, uh, that would be super for you to be able to get those from her. It's nice to have, like I said, always have that, have them refilled. Okay, so right now I have that going over the bunny, right? And so now I have to mask this off so that I don't have the, um, I don't have the meadow grass going all over yet you know, through the picture. I don't really want it going through. I want it to look like it's behind. And this is the best way to do it. And if you notice, I am putting a mask on top of a mask. Because that's kind of like how you, how you would do that. And this is kind of like how it would sort of look anyway. So I do think I'm gonna go ahead and pull out. I don't, I'm gonna make sure that's sticking down. It must not have the tape off of it. Oh, it does. It just happens to be the ink is still a little bit damp underneath. You need to always keep that in mind too. Take your time and let your ink dry a little bit. It works better that way, but when you're doing a video, unless you stop and start, it's kind of hard to do. So we're gonna do this, just like how it's set up, but I am going to use uh, Rainforest. It's actually my favorite green. I don't know why, but it is. So I'm gonna do that. I need to get some of this stuff out of my way every time I turn this. I don't want to lose my little masks. See what I'm saying about that little bit of a hiccup. There we go. 
I just needed to push down on further. So now it looks like um, the bunny is actually in, but when I take this up, it'll look like the grass is behind it. So I really like that. Um, I am going to continue the grass to come over a little bit further. In order to do that, um, I don't want to overlap it too much. So I'm just going to be placing a little bit of this down here. You can kind of see me doing it there. And I'll pull that back over so you can see. Okay. And so I just need to ink up the top of that. So we've got our bunny scene for the most part down there. The next part that I did, if you um, take a peek at the banner, is I also used the fairy, um, the fairy flower. And how I'm going to do that is it's going to. I'm going to come up here to this part. It looks like I got a little bit of ink from my finger, of course, which is okay because I'm going to. I'm going to cover it up with a flower. So. Um, I'm going to have, it's kind of like the, the bunny is, is looking at the flower, and I'm probably going to have some in the background too. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and stamp the um, solid, or the, um, I don't know how to say it. I'm going to use a darker color, and um, I am going to use the um, Distress ink. Oops, and what I'm going to use is um, the pinked or picked raspberry for that. And then I'm going to use a lighter pink behind it. So, and I am going to use a little bit of water. And if you recall the last time, I did it twice and then I added the brown to the center. This time, I am not going to be um, putting pink on the center of that at all. And I am just going to add the brown to it. That's the plan. So I got to pull out my brown as well. And um, the last time I used, I think I'm going to continue to use um, the, the uh, walnut stain. I prefer the walnut stain. Because I've used the... Um, Vintage Photo works too, but I like I want a darker one for this. I think of it as a cone flower, and I really, really I don't know what the, if they're called differently in the UK, but and um, we call them um, cone flower. And then I'm also going to be using um, a green for the um, stem, and I'm going to be using uh, rustic wilderness, and just try to get a little bit of that green on there. Okay, it's kind of like coloring with ink. So, all right, so now I'm gonna spray that and see what we get. And I do like a little bit more water than not from my experience. And there we go. Okay, so that worked really well. And so, like I said, I wish I had a little bit more room here going back and forth horizontal. It's really difficult. So I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna do a lighter pink behind. And the lighter pink that I'm gonna use is, because that's picked raspberry, I think I can do the um, kitsch flamingo. It's a little bit lighter. Or I could actually use the sponge sugar, which is hardly anything at all. Um, let's go with the sponge sugar. We'll just see what that, how that works. Okay, so basically I'm only gonna be doing a little bit up here and a little bit down here, because I just want um, it to be like in the background. All right, so we're gonna give it right there. And then we'll have a little bit at the top. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna do 
sponge sugar, and here's the deal. If the sponge sugar isn't, because it's the lightest color, I can always come in with a picked raspberry, and that would work great. However, I need to pick to see if I even have a lighter brown. I'm hoping that I do. I know I have a lighter green. Yes, I do have a lighter brown. I should have been prepared, but I wasn't thinking. Um, I'm gonna use the tea dye for the brown. And I'm using ink, the um, Distress Ink, not the Oxide, because I do have the colors that I need. I'm gonna have to probably start getting more colors if I'm gonna to continue to do something like this. And let's see here, the um, green I want to use is the Shabby Shutters. I think that will work. Although I don't even think this is gonna hardly show because it's not too much in the picture. Okay, let's see. Otherwise, all I'm going to have to do is really add a different pink, I think, if it's too light. Okay. Let's see what this one looks like. It's definitely subtle in the background, but you know what? I am gonna add, I am gonna make it a little bit darker. I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but it needs to be just a hue darker, I think. So I'm gonna go with a kitchen swimming flamingo and see what happens. I do like the brown, so I'm gonna leave the brown as is, and you can't really see the green. So I'm not adding any of the green to this. Like I said, no center, no brown, just the kitsch flamingo. And I, like I said, I can see that I need to buy a little bit more of the, of the distressed ink. And I like the size of these for doing this kind of inking. Let's see. See if we like that. Yes, I can see that. The other one was just too light, I think. Now I'm getting a lot of water on here at the moment so that yes it's going to do some of the warping even though I've used a heavier cardstock. The next time you see me do this I'm probably going to be using watercolor paper. Okay so we're going to do that one just up here a little bit. And it fits in my, just fits in there. All right, so for this, I am going to have to do, because the brown will show. Even though a little bit of that did show up, that's kind of cool. Just showing you how I am stamping that out. It's not a big deal. And I'm lucky because this is a bigger stamp, so I'm able to do that with these. And this is the T die for the center. Um, there's The green is not going to show, so I'm not putting any green on it. All right, and we're gonna be good for that. So I'm gonna want this to dry, and then, um, yeah, I like that. I'm gonna want this to dry, and then I'm gonna use the Fairy Hugs stencil that is also in the show, and that is um, the, oh, I think this is a floral vine, so I'll have to double check. Um, but yes, I'm gonna use that for the background. So let me let this dry and we'll be right back. Okay, so I decided while that was drying, although now I'm gonna be making it more wet that it, it, I didn't need to wait. So I'm gonna do similar, something similar to what I did in the last video, I'm, but I'm gonna be using Distress Oxide Tumble Glass um, and I'm basically gonna ink this all up and I'm gonna use this part as a stamp I'm gonna to try to avoid the outline as much as I can in this because I don't really want that line to show because this um, project I'm working on is closer to like a five by seven. And so this is a six by six um, stencil. So I'm gonna wipe some of that away as much as I can. 
um, so that maybe those lines won't show up as much. We'll see. So I'm going to spray that and use it, like I said, as a stencil or a stencil as a stamp. And I'm going to have to do that twice because, again, like I said, my um, card is bigger than these, um, longer than the stencil, rather. All right, so like I said, I'm going to try to avoid the lines of the stencil. So I'm not going to push all the way down on where the um, lines are right here. Okay, let's see. Yep, that's what I want. All right, so I'm gonna do that again on this other side really quickly. I have two mats, one for I don't mess up my card and then one where I can just put this ink wherever I want to. Mop that up a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna go back to the tumble glass. And I really technically, I'm only gonna need, yeah, just half of this, I think, but you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and ink it up just to make sure I've got what I need. And again, I'm avoiding the outside line. Okay. I gotta, didn't know what I put where I put my mister, it was right in front of me. Pull this out of the way and put this there. I like that little bit in the background, it's kind of cool. So again, I'm going to try to avoid getting those lines on there. I am going to be cutting this back a little bit, it's longer than what I want it to be. Yay! Alright, I am going to take a little bit of that away from my flower. That was sitting up on top. So, all right, so I need to let that dry. And at this point, I could really take off my mask. I don't want them to get too wet. So I'll show you what that reveal is because I know behind this, I am, um, I don't need to worry about it. So there's our reveal for our teapot. And now we'll reveal our little bunny. So there, see? He looks like he's right inside of that teapot. That's cool. So I'm gonna be coloring this. And like I said, I'm gonna be cropping this back um, a little bit, probably more on this side. And plus, um, some of the um, tape took off what I stamped, so I know I was gonna take it off anyway, so it didn't matter. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna come back with the stencil and add a little bit more ink. So, okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm ready for my next step, and I wanted to um, do the, um, the vine back on here. And I'm gonna try um, Distressed Ink Gloss Shadow. I got this recently, and I haven't used it yet. I've got the Distressed Ink, and I've got the Oxide. My problem is I don't know that this brush is super clean, so I'm not really sure what's going to come out of that. So we'll see. Um, but I, I, I've heard that it's very subtle, so I'm going to start back down here in this part just to see what subtle really means. That's to see if I can see it. I don't know. Because I do want it subtle. Oh, I am seeing it. There's a shadow in there. I mean, it's not from my um, brush being dirty because it had like a yellow on it and I don't see any yellow. So, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna have to rub as hard as what I'm rubbing either. I like it. Showing up. I think I might still add. Um, I also pulled out the um, spun spun sugar. So I think I'm going to add a little bit. I was going to add blue, but I was thinking it's going to take away from the blue I've already put on, and I really didn't want to do that. 
So, but this is coming out. And I actually am rubbing a little bit harder than what I thought I was going to have to do. Well, maybe not. I was thinking people were saying that it's very subtle and it didn't show up much, but actually this is showing up more than my um, Puma Stone, but then my Puma Stone is really probably a little bit dried out. All right, I'm going to put a little bit down over here. All right, let's check it out. Yeah. It's, got, it's very subtle, but I really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that over here. And I still might add a little bit of pink. Just think I, I just think that the pink would probably go well with the um, flower and um, just kind of look pretty. All right. I mean, it's kind of subtle. I think I probably could have done it a little bit darker. I didn't push this hard. Because I actually want to see this, I guess. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to um, put this on again, but I'm going to move it. I'm not going to keep it in the same location, or maybe... I'll just add the, no, I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to do it in a different location. So I just want it to be subtle with a hue, like just a little hue of it showing. I don't know that this is going to show up as much as I want either. Yeah, there it goes. Anyway, this um, is a really cool stencil. I've used it several times, and it works really good with um, texture paste, too. So. Yeah, it's just giving it a little bit of a, a pink hue. You can, it's very, very, very subtle, which is okay. Let me get this kind of move around by being a little bit too rough. Okay, so the one last thing that I would like to do is I'd like to add a sentiment. And I'm going to do that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up really quickly. And the other thing I will do is color this. And you will see what that looks like at the beginning of the video. All right. So the sentiment I am using is also in the show. And um, it is called Be You. And it is already in the store. You can really get this at any time. Um, but it's not always offered. Um, and it is offered in the UK by Julia Watts. This craft store. But it's not always offered on um, Crate and Craft. So, just for 24 hours, actually. I can't even say it's for 24 hours, to be honest with you. I know that it's on at the day, and then by midnight, it's taken off the site. All right. It looks really good. I think I'm just gonna stamp it one more time. I know that the um, oxide, which I use sponge sugar, does make a difference in terms of stamping. But that's good. That shows up. Yay. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna color this up and maybe I'll come back and show you really quickly and then we'll be done. Okay, so I did finish my card. I um, actually put it on a card base, um, and I actually colored in the um, teapot, or teapot, a uh, teacup, and I actually cut it down to be a five by seven card. So, um, and I already showed you everything else in terms of the sentiment and everything, so we're good. And I'll have all of the information in um, the description below. Thanks so much for stopping by.